Mephisto, what have you got for us? Oh, what does that look like? That looks like a pumpkin pie. That actually does. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and ah, this weekly is gonna be all over the place. Between PulseCon last weekend and New York Comic Con this weekend, there's just too much. Just too much. So we're gonna leave PulseCon in the past. Veeves and I did a, well, I know it's a four hour Foosh cast. It's a, it's a haul, but we went through each figure individually, gave our thoughts, lines, reveals, everything. So I'm not gonna rehash all that. Because like I said, New York Comic Con, there's a lot of pictures coming out of the show. And when I, when I saw how many companies and how many toys were being revealed, I, I texted Veeves. I was like, why aren't we at New York Comic Con? And I didn't even have to wait for an answer. It's because we're dumb. We're dumb. We're missing all of that heavenly glory. So, because of the crazy week, there's gonna be stuff I miss. Some things I zip through, some things I dwell on for way too long. Well, I guess that's a usual weekly, isn't it? But if I do miss stuff, like I say at the end, you're gonna hear it in about well, however long this takes. We'll swing back around. Another week, another bit of Furay Planet news. Here is Blade Master Wing, part of their anthropomorphic animal series that isn't trying to sneak into any kind of copyright infringement territory. I mean, if you look hard enough, you're gonna go, oh, well, that kind of looks like so and so from this place or that. But to the general public, this is just a kick ass looking tiger samurai. Make that a big kick ass looking tiger samurai. This thing runs a little over eight and a half inches with a pile of accessories like extra hands, alternate head, hat, cloak, swords, throwing knives, pipe, wine pot, and wooden case. The description on Big Bad Toy Store also lists alternate boots and a bendy wire tail, but I don't see that in any of the pictures, but I may be distracted by, you know, the awesome sculpt, the amazing paint, just this whole presentation looks good. Especially this picture. This picture makes up minds and seals deals all day long. Yes, I know the eye isn't that bright, but that's also not real fire. And he's not actually smoking here. It's marketing, people. $95 scheduled for December, but they have a few more figures in line in front of this that haven't been released yet. And December's coming out awfully quick, so... I wouldn't be surprised if this gets pushed back a bit. Like I mentioned, New York Comic Con is kicking off as I speak, as I record this. <laughs> By the time you watch this, it'll be old news. But anyway, Super 7's there. That means new reveals. You know, like ODB Ultimate's Old Dirty Bastard. I never thought I'd see an old dirty bastard action figure. And yes, before you ask, although, yeah, I sprinkle it into videos every now and then, but I do know Wu-Tang. Even here in... Backwoods Hillbilly, Arkansas in 93, 36 Chambers was a mainstay in my CD case that hung out in the car. Then there's also Godzilla Ultimates Wave 3 with Destroya and 1200 degrees Celsius Godzilla? Is that right? Did I say it wrong? Is it something else? 1200 degrees Celsius Godzilla. Godzilla! Are you okay? Like I've said many a time, I'm not familiar with this franchise much past the main beasties. So these these dive way past that. I mean, Destroya is an awesome design, almost a Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Kaiju type thing happening. I feel like it's a smaller than It looks so cool that it makes me want to learn more. And I guess Zomzilla's about the same. I don't know why Godzilla has flesh melting away. I can probably guess. I mean, was he fighting another big beast of some kind and but how do you keep going with just a skull hmm i'm asking the hard questions you know not how does a giant lizard walk around on earth and then he's our hero but he destroys most of the city when he's come through you know godzilla is 85 dollars destroya is 110 and these and odb are both due out in fall 2023. McFarlane Toys is also at New York Comic Con showing off some new stuff, but before that, they were doing reveals last weekend. In fact, as soon as the weekly went up, I swear, every time. Think about it, the Target exclusive gold label Defiance Deathstroke and the Kyle Rayner Green Lantern were already being found at stores before the big reveal. So they started off as old news, which seems to be happening a lot with McFarlane toys lately. Not that it's a bad thing. In fact, there's a fun factor to walking into your store and seeing something that 
Oh, well, I did not know that existed. But because of the internet, very few people get to have that feeling. It's posted, it's widespread, people go hunting, and then when the toy company goes, hey, go buy this new figure. I already have that. That's old. Show me something new. Hell, I saw him at my Target this week, and my Target's pretty terrible. So, I mean, if that tells you anything. There's also this Target exclusive gold label endless Wonder Woman who, at first glance, isn't much different from the regular release. That, when did that come out? Recently? Long time ago? Feels like a long time ago. But looking closer, there is a new head, new weapons, and slight changes like the gold trim on the front of the boots, the silver at the top of the gloves. Back to NYCC though, thanks to Preternia.com on Twitter, we get to gawk and gander at all the goodies that McFarlane revealed at their panel. First, is that a gun with that Mr. Freeze? The winds are a-changing. That Batman is nice though, and the Catwoman is a version that a lot of people have been waiting for for a while. Superboy and Eradicator looks good. Joker seems a little cartoony, but we aren't exactly hurting for Jokers at the moment, so that's okay. Just a different version for different people. And then, I don't know what that Power Ranger Batman is. <laughs> I'll wait for the official solicitations, I guess. I do know the Nolan trilogy, though, and it's cool to knock out Batman and the main villains from each movie all in one fell swoop. Plus, any excuse to pull out the old Bane, huh? Seven inch ultra articulated action figures. Page Punchers continues with an Aquaman wave that includes, well, Aquaman, Aqualad, Ocean Master, and Black Manta. New mega figs for fall are Mongol and Frankenstein. Then some surprising additions to the Batman 66 line, like Egghead. Back when this series first started, we didn't expect it to go this deep. But there we go, there's Egghead. And there's King Tut, another character we figured for a long shot. But then there's Two-Face. From what I understand, Two-Face didn't actually show up in the original show, but there was a more recent animated movie set during the series where Two-Face was voiced by William Shatner. So I'm guessing they're pulling inspiration from that for this? Then to wrap it all up, Radioactive Batman. You know, from the episode where Mad Hatter hit him with a radioactive spray and it turned his cow pink. You know, from radiation and he didn't have any spare cows because they were all at the dry cleaners. I ain't lying. Look it up. Guess who else is at New York Comic Con? It's NECA. But because it's Halloween month, they were already doing horror top reveals like the Universal Monsters creature from the Black Lagoon. Looking absolutely luscious, ready for that kissing booth. They also busted out Phantom of the Opera, looking all phantom -y and opera -y. I don't know a lot about Phantom of the Opera. La, la, la. But that does lead right into NECA's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossover with Universal Monsters, Casey Jones as the Phantom of the Opera. This just works so well because of the mask, because of the crack, and they even did the same side eye on both Phantoms. To kick off the show though, the full solicitation for Donatello as the Invisible Man appeared, and Looking at it now, with all the pretty promotional pictures, it's a lot more invisible than I first thought. There's some clear hands and feet, along with a neat torn open head wrap to show the hollowness inside, but what catches my eye is the transparent shell. Is Donnie storing pizzas in there, or does he eat them whole slices at a time? I'm asking the hard questions today. That's the kind of guy I am. You want to know what weirds me out more, though? Like Leo, like Raph, it's putting hair on a turtle. Uh-uh. That's wrong. $37 scheduled for March, which is my birthday month. A Donatello coming out in my birthday month. That's just, that's just fate, baby. Sticking with TMNT, NECA did raise some hackles this week, though, announcing some Mirage Comics exclusives at Walmart. That's never good words to put together. TMNT, Walmart exclusives. There's Black and White Shredder, there's Black and White Foot Soldier, and then there's Renette in the blue. But one, did I mention Walmart exclusive? I think I did. On top of that, there's also some collaboration called Auto T that brings in an NFT element to the whole situation where you're actually buying a code and then you get that code and then you enter that code and then you have to decide whether you want to store this in a digital vault for up to two years or go ahead and ship it. Th but then you can trade and sell? I don't know. I'm getting to the age where this might as well be fire in prehistoric times. To me, it just seems like another step between hand and plastic. We don't need all this <laughs> rigmarole. Just, I want to buy a product. I want to receive product. 
that's it. Thankfully, I'm not too interested in these figures which is only speaking for myself, but that's all I can do. So I didn't have to enter this brave new world, but good luck to everyone else who did want these. Some new Mattel Masters of the Universe Masterverse solicitations this week. Yeah. Some of these were revealed at San Diego Comic-Con, but I guess I lost them in the hustle and bustle. Like Stratos, who did get a Mo Tuesday feature about a month ago. But <laughs> Mattel being Mattel, even though it is now on full pre-order, this is still the only picture we have to look at. What comes off? What goes on? What swaps out? What's it look like out of the package? Oh yeah, again, <laughs> I'm just now remembering it was on display in the glass case at SDCC. So there is a loose shot, but at the same time, pretty promotional pictures lock it in for me. There's only one image for Bat Sorceress Evil Lynn too, but good grief do I love this costume. But then you start zooming in, you realize it's just a blank body with the costume details painted on. Big muscle guys just swap out parts, but it seems odd for Evil Lynn. One picture for Frosta too, who again was at the show, but there and then looking at my own pictures, I didn't realize that the hair transitioned from blue to clear. That's a neat ice effect for Frosta. Painted leggings, but more sculpted up top, so it kind of splits the difference. Mattel went all out with the photo spread for Manny Faces, though, and this has the potential to be my favorite Masterverse figure. I'm always harping on head size for some reason. I, I mean, I, I'm pretty critical of it in other lines, too, but here, it just whew, right in my face. That's not a problem with Manny Faces. He's got that big head cover on. Comes with six masks. You can load three of them in the tumbler that you can flop around there. And then he comes with a case to hold the other three. So that's pretty neat. Roboto is high on my list too. I always liked that figure back in the day. So it's nice to get an updated version. Again, my noggin obsession is in check because it's not a human. It's humanoid, but it's a robot. So parts and pieces can look out of proportion. At least that's how I justified it in my head. Yeah. But damn the person who commented about the gizmo duck resemblance. I can't unsee it now. But I'm still looking forward to it because it looks cool. $24 a pop, set to release January next year. Little news on the 3-0 Transformers MDLX front. We've gotten Bumblebee. We've gotten Optimus Prime. Megatron's been shown. Hot Rod's been teased. Or is it Rodimus Prime? One or the other. I don't know why I never considered Cliff Jumper. It makes total sense. Like in the past, it reuses a lot of Bumblebee. But looking at it, it's almost too much Bumblebee. Especially the feet. They are just very VW bug-like. Again, I understand it's happened in the past, but man, at least they changed the head though. That looks pretty good. That's all we got at the moment, but I'm looking forward to seeing more of this. Another little tease of future product, 5K Toys posted this image of a third-party Agent Venom. I mean, <clears throat> Uh, poison operative. How's that? I like the look of this. It's bulky in all the right places, pointy where it needs to be. The matteness of the armor just works so well with the sheen of the cloth undersuit. It's a nice contrast. It helps things stand out when they need to. But when all the... Okay, we're not even gonna beat around the bush here. When all the venomness is put on there with the guns on the tentacles and the, and the tongue and the extra mouths and stuff, Mm -mm -mm. The hands and the feet do come off small though. I'd like to see chunkier mitts and then some bigger mud hole stompers. I know these do match up with the reference really well in some places, but in my head, I want to put some combat boots on them. No info at the moment, and there's no promises that this will even go up for pre-order, but we've got a couple of pretty pictures. But that does bring us to Marvel Legends. The Hasbro team had a hell of a showing last weekend at PulseCon, especially if you're an X-Men fan, and I am. One thing they didn't mention though was the retail release of Mojo. Same sculpt as the exclusive, it's just a different paint deco. The way I look at it, the more rich yellow in the box set, that's the 90s version. This with the paler skin, a bit washed out, that's all 80s. And I like me some 80s. $55 releasing right now. Another item not mentioned at the panel but already showing up in people's mailboxes, the Black Panther Wakanda Forever Ironheart. Like Mojo, just popped up in stock, ready to ship. And they're both deluxe top releases. I wonder if that has anything to do with it. I don't know a lot about this character, and even less when it comes to the MCU, which I think none of us really know what's going on at the moment, but it does make me think very anime-ish, very video game-ish, a nice design. I need to see this in live action. $34, again, <laughs> available now. And then 
Oh, the old HasLab Hell Charger. Like you saw in the intro, another tier was teased at PulseCon, and then just a couple of days later, Goblin Queen. They're calling her Tier Zero, the slotted in between the Hell Charger and Mephisto. And I like this, there's definitely no mistaking that it's Madeline. Now, it is missing some iconic costume beats that, you know, showed up in one of the better known storylines, including her. <coughs> Inferno! <coughs> But this look does match more recent storylines. And like I mentioned a minute ago, I'm a huge X fan. I would love to have Pryor on my shelf, but not enough for me to jump into the campaign because I'm not really interested in Robbie or the car. And that's cool. That's okay. That is responsible collecting, which I will admit is kind of a new frontier for me. But I guess... Am I getting more relaxed as I get older? I don't know. I definitely don't disparage anyone wanting to jump in here, though. If you want it, you gotta go in. But, unfortunately, it looks like... Yeah, it's gonna come down to the wire if it comes down to anything. You do you. I'll do me. We're a great big family. Plenty of other Marvel shinies for me to doe-eye. I mean, did you see the X-Men retro stuff? Ooh. Ooh. Or the training uniforms? Sweet baby Nathan. Gimme, gimme. Speaking of gimme, gimme's... The Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified Series retro carded Snake Eyes and Crimson Guard that were also revealed back at San Diego Comic-Con, those went up for pre-order today on Walmart.com. That means more pretty promotional pictures, and they are pretty. I don't even have the regular release Crimson Guard yet, and here I am pre-ordering another version. And as I was looking at it, I was thinking, what's the differences here? Really, the only big difference is the masks. The retro has silver, the regular release has black. I guess the shade of reds may be slightly different, but that's trusting promotional images. I can't make that call until they're side by side in my hands. And I'm sure they talked about it at the panel at SDCC, but again, that was a long time ago. I can't remember stuff like that. I can't remember verbal descriptions. I gotta have pictures. I gotta have plastic. But Snake Eyes, holy shit. I thought I was in love with the Commando version from the Timber Pack, and I still am, but ooh, my heart will go on. Although it has been about six or seven times now that I've been, man, this is my end-all, be-all Snake Eyes. What? Yeah, I know it's Stalker in black plastic with a new head, but there's precedent for that. There's history in that. If it works, it works. Add that to the retro card, that is just one big, sloppy, sweaty, nasty, unapologetic nostalgia tug. And I love it. Both are part of Walmart's Collector Con, $25 a piece. The release date says June 2023, but how things have been lately? It could be next month. It could be exactly one year from now. So I pre-ordered, gonna forget about it. Just wait for them to ship. Exact same situation for the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Halloween editions, except one is Walmart, one is Target. It's Star Wars. They always have to complicate it a bit. Again, announced at San Diego Comic-Con, the Bone Clone is just a trooper painted black with a green skeleton on it, but somehow it, it works. I think I'll put it with the Umbra Operative Art Trooper for extra Halloweeniness. Make it some kind of skeleton crew or something. They team up. And if you're scrunching your face up right now, just about to type how stupid this whole concept is, ah, waste of space, waste of time, you're really gonna hate the Walmart Werewookie. And I'll admit, the first time I saw it with the ear sticking out the top, I thought, what in the hell is this? But then I remembered, oh, I collect toys. It's not that serious. I realized it's seasonal. It's Halloween. It's got a thriller aspect to it. It's in a gray color that I really, really love. Yeah, I'm all over it. Or I can put it on the main display, call it a rare mutant Wookiee. Hug it and love it and call it George. For some reason though, Chewbarca is $28 at Walmart, while Boney Cloney is $26.50 at Target. Oh, Walmart. And I'm not even gonna say it. That's not it for this week. New York Comic Con day one hasn't even kicked off as I'm recording this. If you wanna see any of these pictures up close without me all, if you've paid for a toy, but you're not actually in possession of it, do you own it? Or does it exist at all? Does it not exist until you can hold it in your hands? 
but you've paid for it. I'll be posting all of that along with links to pre-orders, more information on the Foosh front page Saturday at noon. But if you can't wait that long, links are in the description. I've been playing around with the shorts option on YouTube for a little bit now, doing a little bit of news, which may continue. I are doing like very, very short reviews, but I'm so long winded that it is very, very hard to cut it down to one minute. But I've also been doing some custom tips and tricks. Now, <laughs> oh, I've been doing this for 25, 30 years, but I am not an expert in anything. I just know how to do what I do. It may not be right, but it works for me. And people seem to be enjoying it. In fact, I just posted the removing paint with nail polish remover. And if one more person says Q-tips, I'm gonna lose my damn mind. No, it's fine. In fact, that's the fun thing about posting something like that. Even though I've been doing this for a while, there's new things to learn. If you're interested in more stuff like that, let me know what exactly, what specifically you wanna see. Except sculpting. I do not sculpt because I'm terrible at it. If you enjoyed this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the Foosh. Okay, confession time. During the Foosh cast, I was like, oh, I am not getting that Hasbro exclusive Star Wars Black Series 2 pack with Cassian and B2 EMO. Cassian comes out standard. It's just the droid and Veebs kept hacking away on me, hacking away on me, and I ended up getting it. So I'm fully expecting Hasbro to announce the toolbox droid as a single release here in the next month or two. Remember I said responsible collecting? Uh, yeah, I'm still getting a grasp on that.